For decades, world trade has been dominated by the dollar. The strength of a nation's currency is based on the strength of that nation's economy. And the American economy is by far the strongest in the world. The Swiss system, that actually became weaponized by the U.S. The Monetary Authority of Singapore and the People's Bank of China have renewed the bilateral currency swap arrangement. Saudi Arabia is in discussions with China to price some of its oil sales in Yuan. But as ties with Washington continue to be strained, Beijing and Moscow are diversifying. China and Russia had taken another step closer towards dumping the dollar and agreed to trade in their respective national currencies, the Russian ruble and the Chinese yuan. Hi everybody! The US dollar has been the most powerful currency in the world for 80 long years and like we saw in the previous episodes, this reserve currency status gives the United States such unprecedented power over the world economy that it can cripple the economy of any country within a fortnight. And because of this power, it has even dominated giant players like Russia and China. But you know what guys, this is where China and Russia have actually come up with a master plan to kill the dollar dominance in the world. And if you look at the past 10 years data, you will see that it's actually working out quite well. In 1999, USD had 71% market share among the global reserve currencies. But in the past 10 years, it has dropped to less than 59%. And in the next 10 years, if this strategy of China and Russia works out, we might see the rise of a new reserve currency in the form of Chinese Yuan. So the question is, what is this master plan of China and Russia to kill the dollar dominance in the world? How do they plan to dethrone US from the superpower status of the world? And lastly, what are the challenges that China and Russia will face in this currency wars of the world? This video is brought to you by Kuku FM, but more on this at the end of the video. To understand this China-Russia strategy, we first have to understand why is the US dollar so so powerful and why does it have almost a monopoly status among the reserve currencies of the world. And if you watched our dollar superpower episode and if you remember this concept, please skip to this timestamp. If you don't, here's a quick and short explanation of the same. Firstly, dollar served as a reserve currency of trust whereby in 1994, US said if you have dollars, we would exchange its value in gold at $35 per ounce. So now, two countries that may or may not trust each other could do trade with each other without trouble. So this way, when Indonesia got $1 million from Pakistan, even if Indonesia did not trust Pakistan, they know for sure that the $1 million that they got could be exchanged for gold with the US. So it was definitely worthy. Otherwise, if they do trade with Pakistan in Pakistani rupees, today 10,000 Pakistani rupees might be worthy of buying 1 gram of gold. But the next week itself, if Pakistan prints more money and declares that, 20,000 Pakistani rupee will buy you 1 gram of gold. Do you realize what would happen? The entire value of trade with Indonesia would actually collapse. Moreover, if Indonesia wants to use Pakistani rupees, then if other countries do not trust Pakistan's economy, then that money again could not be used for trade. But if the same transaction happened in dollars, the United States guaranteed the value of dollars with gold. So you could trade with any country with the US dollars and be rest assured that it could be used to trade with any other country to buy any other commodity. But, 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 in 1971, Richard Nixon came out of nowhere and ended this gold standard where everyone was free to choose any currency to trade. The strength of a nation's currency is based on the strength of that nation's economy. And the American economy is by far the strongest in the world. I have directed Secretary Connolly to suspend temporarily the convertibility of the dollar into gold or other reserve assets. The effect of this action, in other words, will be to stabilize the dollar. But even then, almost all countries stuck to the dollar. Why? Because dollar was the only currency that could buy you oil from the Saudis. And why is that? Because in 1945, the US President Franklin Roosevelt made an agreement of the century with the Saudi king, whereby the US guaranteed the security of Saudi Arabia and in exchange, the Saudi king agreed to sell oil in US dollars. So if you wanted to buy oil, you needed to have US dollars. This is the second reason for the dominance of the dollar and that is the power to purchase oil. And these two superpowers of trust and oil gave the US the third superpower through the SWIFT network. And how does the SWIFT network work? Through the US dollar stored in US bank accounts. So if an Indian trader wanted to make a transaction to the Sri Lankan trader, this system would have an Indian trader, an Indian bank, an American bank 1, American bank 2, foreign bank and foreign trader. 
The highlight over here being both Indian and Sri Lankan banks will have an account in the American bank where it has its money stored in dollars. So if Reliance wants to import minerals worth 1 crore rupees from Sri Lanka, they would give the Indian bank 1 crore Indian rupees and ask them to pay the same amount in dollars to the Sri Lankan traders account. So now that Indian bank has 1 crore rupees in its Indian account, it would send a message to its dollar account in America to send 1 crore worth of dollars to the Sri Lankan bank's dollar account in the US. In this case, assuming 80 rupees to the dollar to be exchange rate, 125,000 dollars would be transferred from the Indian account in the US to the Sri Lankan account in the US. And now that the Sri Lankan bank has 125,000 dollars in the US account, it would pay the Sri Lankan trader the equivalent of 125,000 dollars from its account in Sri Lanka. This is how the SWIFT network works and just like Indian and Sri Lankan banks, today more than 200 countries and 10,000 banks trade with the US dollars and have their forex reserves with the American banks. And the catch over here is that if a country has 100 billion dollars in forex and spends only 30 billion dollars in import and export, they would have 70 billion dollars in surplus, right? So you know what, just like we avoid keeping a lot of savings and invest our money in stocks, these countries invest their excess foreign reserves in US Treasury bonds. And just like our government bonds, this is a mega bond whereby countries are lending billions of excess dollars to the US and expect a return after maturity. And this is where the unfair advantage of the US dollar comes in. As of January 2022, while Japan had $1.3 trillion in US securities, China holds $1.06 trillion and UK held $608 billion in US Treasury bonds. And in total, the US held $7 trillion by foreign and international investors as of September 2021. This is so much money that it's more than the GDP of France, India and Russia combined. So in simple words, the US dollar has three superpowers, trust for trade, power to buy oil and lastly, it has all the excess forex reserves invested in its own economy with $7 trillion in bonds. By the way guys, these excess dollars are called as petro dollars. And this is where both Russia and China have a problem. And like we saw in the previous episodes, China is extremely annoyed at the US for supporting Taiwan and Russia is already the most sanctioned country in the world. So now, Russia is not able to use its dollar accounts in the US to do trade and at the same time, most of the Russian companies have also been removed from the SWIFT network. So with two superpowers being bullied by one big Uncle Sam, both of them got pissed and joined hands to take down the mighty United States of America itself. And this is where China and Russia started their game plan. So the question is, how can China and Russia together kill the dominance of the dollar and what exactly is their strategy? Well, the first thing we need to understand is that leverage is one of the most powerful tools in geopolitics. In this case, Russia is one of the largest oil and gas producers in the world. So although Saudi and other countries were selling oil and gas in dollars, Russia punished its unfriendly countries by asking them to buy Russian oil in rubles. So by default, most of the European countries had to buy Rubel in spite of their hating Putin for it. Which means what? In the payment network diagram, instead of US bank having dollar reserves, all the unfriendly countries that bought oil from Russia now had to keep their money in Russian central bank. So just like dollar reserves helped the US economy, the Rubel reserves are expected to compromise for the damage to the Russian economy. Which means, just like petro dollar, we are seeing the rise of petro ruble. And if you look at Russia's dollar reserves, they have been preparing to get rid of the dollar since 2014 itself. And if you see this graph, the US treasuries have gone down from $150 billion in 2013 to just $3.98 billion as of 2021. This is the leverage that Russia has over Europe. Similarly, China has its leverage with the Belt and Road Initiative countries. And if you remember from our BRI episode, China's Belt and Road Initiative is a $3 trillion project whereby the Chinese have given out over generous loans to countries all across the world. And you know what? Under the BRI initiative, in total, there are 165 countries in the world who owe a collective debt of $385 billion to China. And many of these countries have taken so much debt from China that they cannot afford to pay it back to China. And we saw this very, very clearly with both Pakistan and Sri Lanka, right? And this is where China's strategic move comes in. And now that China has a leverage over these countries, experts say that China would now ask these countries to take and pay back loans in Yuan. And in exchange, China could incentivize the scheme by giving them a 1% discount on their interest. Now, do you realize, if Pakistan owes $24.7 billion in debt to China, 
Considering its economic crisis right now, a 1% discount on a 24.7 billion dollars in debt is a big big deal for Pakistan. In fact, since the inception of the BRI initiative, China has already issued 14% of all its loans in its own currency without depending on the dollar. And guess what? In 2018, the Central Bank of Pakistan had already agreed to conduct their bilateral trade with China in yuan. And even other countries like Myanmar, Cambodia and Russia are doing the same now. On top of that, China is now the largest trade partner with 25 BRI participating countries. So again, the leverage of trade for China is very very strong. So you see, with the combination of both trade and debt, China could pressurize these countries to use yuan over the dollar. So this way, over time, China could pull the strings of 165 nations and could drastically increase the circulation of yuan. Now the question over here is all these countries are mostly poor countries right so how would china and russia get rich countries like england and south korea to skip the dollar well firstly russia is strongly supporting china and has already turned the chinese yuan into their reserve currency so this is a major major move and as far as other countries are concerned they have something called bilateral currency swap agreement and this is something that even india is pursuing very very strategically with its ally countries So the question is what is the bilateral currency swap agreement and how does it actually work in international trade As usual let's try to understand this using a story Let's say China and UK sign a bilateral currency swap agreement of 5 years for a value of 1 million dollars What this means is that China will sell 1 million dollars worth of yuan to UK and UK will sell 1 million dollars worth of pounds to China So after conversion China will give 6.842 million yuan to UK and UK will give China 847250 pounds and they will agree upon the exchange rate to be 8.07 so for 5 years Chinese central bank can sell these pounds and get US dollars or it can lend these pounds to domestic bank and companies to settle their trade similarly the bank of England can do the same with yuan so now if an english businessman wants to buy 1 million yuan worth of goods from china if he went by the conventional means what would he have to do he would have to pay in pounds to the english bank which will then convert the sum to dollars then transfer the dollars to the us bank account of china and then the chinese bank will transfer the converted sum of yuan to the chinese businessman this will incur both a lot of time and a lot of cost but now the english businessman would simply borrow 1 million yuan from the bank of england and directly pay the chinese bank account in england and as soon as this money is transferred in the chinese bank account in england the chinese bank in china would transfer 1 million yuan to the chinese businessman and the same thing could be done vice versa when a chinese businessman wants to buy something from uk so if you see two big players can now do international trade without depending on the us dollar This is how the currency swap agreement works and after 5 years both the central banks of UK and China will pay their respective currencies back at the agreed exchange rate of 8.07 so this way both countries get three major advantages number 1 both countries can eliminate their exchange risk number 2 both countries can use this currency to exchange it for dollars if needed and thirdly businesses in both countries can carry out trade more economically so the business relationship between both the countries gets better and better with time and last and most importantly the dependency on us dollar decreases by a large large extent and guess what beijing has signed more than 3 trillion yuan worth of bilateral currency swap deals with more than 40 countries across the world and this includes 400 billion yuan each with hong kong and south korea 350 billion yuan each with bank of england and the european central bank 300 billion yuan with singapore and 150 billion yuan with russia and cherry on the cake Since China is the world's largest manufacturer with almost 20% of the entire world's manufacturing happening in China they could further leverage this in order to push the companies to pay in yuan instead of the US dollars and guess what now Saudi Arabia is considering selling oil in yuan which means if Saudi Arabia starts selling oil in yuan a lot of countries would rush to buy yuan And again, like we saw in the case with excess forex being invested in US bonds, the excess yuan would then be invested in Chinese bonds making the Chinese economy more and more powerful. This is how China and Russia are slowly building their currency strategies to overthrow the reserve currency thrown from the US dollar. So this strategy looks pretty clean and straightforward, right? Now does this mean that yuan is going to overthrow the dollar? Well, not really. And this brings me to the last part of the episode and that are the challenges that yuan is going to face in this currency war against the dollar. 
But before we move on, I want to quickly thank our partners of this episode and that is Kuku FM. Kuku FM is India's leading audio learning platform with over 1000 plus hours of content library with over 4.5 plus rating and a huge library of non-fiction content. Here, you can explore a plethora of high grade content for both business and geopolitics in your own regional language. So if you're deeply interested in the rise of China, you must check out the audio show called The Rise of China. And for business, my favorite book summaries include The Start with Why and The Art of Negotiation. So if these kind of subjects intrigue you, then use the code THINK50 to get a 50% discount on the Kuku FM subscription. This is applicable only for the first 250 users, so go ahead, use the special link in the description and download the Kuku FM app now. Moving on, the first challenge that both China and Russia are going to face is their notorious reputation in the world. China has a reputation of being notorious with the debt trap diplomacy and Taiwan invasion and Russia is already being cornered by the West. Secondly, China has been devaluing its currency very very frequently. In fact, the US has even accused China for currency manipulation. On top of that, by now it is pretty clear to the world that China is not as transparent as the US. So, it's going to deter the country from actually adopting the yuan over the US dollars. And lastly, US obviously does not like the rise of yuan and the amount of money and military leverage that US has, it's not so difficult for them to actually push against the Chinese yuan. And the key to this is going to be something called the digital dollar and its war against digital yuan. I'll be making a separate video on this but for now this is information overload so have a look at the study materials and do let me know what you think that's all from my side for today guys if you learned something valuable please make sure to hit the like button in order to make youtube ever happy and for more such insightful business and political case studies please subscribe to our channel thank you so much for watching i will see you in the next one bye bye